Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Bingo, we're back, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Hi, Maria Tomei, my co-host. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, I, I came back from my energy experience in Iceland, yeah? Yeah. It was quite something. Yeah. I might have a minute or two to tell you about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, and uh, we have Brad Romine with us. He is a scientist, and he is a, a coastal specialist and consultant uh, for the Sea Grant program, yeah? Correct, correct. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yep, so I work for the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program. I'm a, a geologist, coastal geologist by background, training, done a research studies on um, beach erosion, sea level rise, human impacts to our coastlines and, and beaches and all that. And um, been working with the, really closely with the State Department of Land and Natural Resources, among others, um, to understand uh, what the future looks like for our coastlines with, with sea level rise. We already have a lot of problems with beach erosion, um, wave run up, wave overwash during high waves and our winters and, and all that. And you know, unfortunately, we're only expecting those things to get worse in the coming decades with climate change and sea level rise. So I've um, been involved in um, a recent study, um, this Hawaii Sea Level Rise Vulnerability and Adaptation Report that the State um, Climate Mitigation Adaptation Commission um, directed the state DLNR to do, and uh, I, my work through DLNR helped them develop this report, looking out a uh, few decades out to the end of the century of what, what sea level rise might look like for, mm. for our state. You're not scaring me yet. See if you can we'll scare get there. me a little, Brad. We'll get there. I think I scared the last group a little <laughs> bit at the uh, <laughs> the presentation at Verge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing about talking about this. It's not the cheeriest um, topic, but you know what? It's something we, we can't bury our heads in, our sa in the sand. we got we got to start addressing this issue. Well, I'll give you my mm, mm, Im imperfect, non-scientific mm, citizen view of this. It, it's going to inundate our beaches, and as our beaches go, so goes our economy and everything in Hawaii, everything in Hawaii, and that's coming, and it might even come faster than we think, because yeah. my view of the, the science, forgive me that, is that uh, we make predictions, but actually, it, every time you look, it seems to be moving faster than we thought it was moving. Yeah. And so if you say, oh, we're gonna have a problem by 2050, well, it might be 2045 or 2040, yeah. and, and, and nobody really, sees that there's a sort of logarithmic timeline involved here. Mm -hmm. um, so as we look, you know, the idea is to get old really quickly so you don't have to enjoy it. Oh, yeah. yeah. The old guys are way ahead <laughs> on this deal. Um, but I'm, and I'm worried that uh, Hawaii is going to suffer hugely, not only because of the economy, the sea level rise, yeah. um, but because we're going to have extreme storms. And uh, we're going to have the same kind of response, this is my worry, uh, the same kind of response uh, from FEMA and the other groups in the national, you know, holding with the national money um, uh, that Puerto Rico had. Mm. Oh, surprise! Yeah. That, that's an energy impact, don't you think, Maria? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we are, I am very worried about this. So you don't, you don't have to scare me. I'm already, okay, good. already scared. All right, my work's done here then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, Maria, why don't you ask Brad to introduce this report? Okay. It's like introducing a guest. Okay. Yes, yes. So, last week we had Anu Hiddel on, who was mm -hmm. talking about the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Task Force, and she mentioned one of the things that they had produced was this report, right. the Sea Level Rise Report. So, we wanted to find someone to come and talk to us about this report, mm -hmm. um, and it was just what done in, Dece I mean, it was released in December or something like that? It was just finished um, in December, it's past December 2017, and um, delivered to the State Climate uh, Mitigation Adaptation Commission. This is a commission that was brought together by some state legislation, a couple bills, one that was passed in 2017, another one in uh, 2014, which both directed um, through the State Department of Land and Natural Resources to develop this sea level rise vulnerability and adaptation report. It was about three years in the making since that first act in 2014. It was a, it was a major effort um, with a consultant, Tetra Tech Incorporated, which the, the state hired through the DLNR, um, and then working really closely with um, the uh, UH Coastal Geology Group, that's Dr. Chip Fletcher and, and his research team. This is his cup of tea with all his charts and graphs and yeah. inundation diagrams. And they were essential to this report. They did a lot of really incredible modeling, uh, mapping for um, 
what some of these impacts from sea level rise will look like in at various heights um, of sea level rise along our coast throughout Hawaii. So looking at um, what high tide flooding will look like, yeah. looking at um, erosion forecasts, yeah. and, and then looking at um, wave overwash pr projections for, for the coastline. Um, and then mapped all that and then kind of combined those areas into this overall sea level rise exposure area. Again, this is throughout Hawaii. Um, and uh, doing some economic in impacts uh, assessment. Economic impact. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I say economic, I mean this is this is looking at um, the vulnerability of property and buildings along our shorelines that would potentially be um, inundated in this in this sea level rise exposure area in the report. But, but we're not surprised with that. We're not surprised that we have sea level rise. I mean, Chip Fletcher has been talking about that, and and your yeah. school has been talking about that like right. forever. Um, and uh, you know, we know that it's the, the waves are lapping at our shores, yeah. and we know that tourism, you know, can't tolerate that. And we know there's a problem. You know, and and I always wonder on all these reports. I wonder whether this is like making a report about the hull damage in the Titanic. Mm. As it is going down, down, down. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, tell me why it's important. Well, you're, to your point, you know, sea level is already rising. We're already facing a lot of these problems. We, we can see on our tide gauges around Hawaii and globally that sea level rise is, is going on already. Um, we already have widespread coastal erosion problems here in Hawaii. Seventy percent of our beaches we know are eroding on Kauai, Oahu, and Maui. Um, we have coastal highways that are getting eroded, you know, up on our windward side that are getting um, washed away, eroded. Yeah, yeah, so we have these existing problems. I, the, the goal of the report, you know, really, and from my eyes, is, is um, you know, we have these problems. How much worse are they going to get in, in the future? Um, you know, we, we're, there's a lot of science on, you know, projections of what sea level rise might be, um, you know, how high and when, and there's a lot of variability in that. but. This is the first effort in Hawaii to really map out what areas are vulnerable at varying heights of sea level um, in in the future. Uh, you know, within this century. Why do I care what areas are vulnerable? I mean, is this is this going to go to my my real estate appraisal value of my my home on the waterfront or what? Um, I, I don't know. We know how the data will be used. It's possible. We think. I think that people should be um, aware of this information. It should be something that should be disclosed when somebody buys a you know a property. But uh, you can look it up. that's they can look it up. It's now publicly available information. You can go yeah. on the map and look at what areas are affected at what heights and projected what year. Right. Uh, Sell immediately. <laughs> you know that's like you know selling in Pune. <laughs> we, we just think this is important information. Of course, there's a lot of questions and ramifications for, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to get too deep into that, but. No, 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 um, but I, you know, what, I, what I'm really asking is when you, okay, so you find that certain areas are going to be more vulnerable. Yeah. Certain beaches are going to be washed away. There's going to be more inundation here and there. And, yeah. And, um, you know, you need a scientific approach to determine what what is going to be affected more than, you know, the other places. Yeah. But query. In the report, or um, is there is there a, a place in the report that says, well, you know, um, this beach is critical, critical mm. to the economy. This beach is critical to a neighborhood, you know, involving 5,000 homes. Yeah. This beach is critical to infrastructure that's you know pumping water or sewage or whatever or electri mm. electrical power. Uh, and we and this speech is therefore number one priority. Mm. So you, the powers that be, have to move that up because of our report to number one priority, and you have to put some money on protecting us from that. I mean, is that where it goes? That's that's a good example of the kind of next steps that I, I hope will be taken with this information, with the map layers and, and the report and the information that we have from this is is prioritizing. So the report has all this map data, but it has all these recommendations. And and one of the recommendations is that we should start prioritizing particular beaches, you know, that we want to save among 30-some recommendations in a report, um, you know, because that we're probably not going to be able to save them all. And there's, there may be some areas where we do want to. You're scaring me now, Brett. You know, we're, all, we're losing them. We've already lost 13 miles of beaches here in Hawaii to, to sea walls in front of um, homes and, and our highways and, and other development. Um, we've slowed that seawall construction down, the state has and the counties have in the last couple decades, but it still goes on. And But, you know, we've lost extensive beaches in front of that. We've got to kind of um, start prioritizing which beaches we want to save. A lot of our coastal areas, particularly here on Oahu, Kauai, and Maui as well, um, we've built right on top of sand dunes and old beach deposits that were laid down, you know, in, in, in over Did geologic history. I don't think we, 
we knew, we certainly didn't know to the degree um, that we do now that a lot of these beaches were chronically retreating like they are, but um, I have to think. Well, the it, retreat has increased, accelerated hugely in the past, what, five or 10 years? Anyway. Well, anecdotally, it seems to have increased. You know, we don't know if the rates of erosion are actually accelerating here in Hawaii, but, um, but it's a widespread problem nonetheless. And, and you know, I, I just think, yeah, in, in hindsight, I think we could have built a lot smarter and back further back from the coast. But everybody wants to be right up on that white sand and the, and the beautiful blue water. Um, but we're kind of paying for it now. Mm, really left ourselves so very vulnerable. Yeah. 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 <coughs> you know, I have to say that there's a <clears throat> strange connection between this whole analysis and the Puna problem, mm. referring to it as the PP. Um, in the Puna problem, you know, people knew that Puna was sitting on top of geothermal. They knew that there were fissures and seismic rifts and seismic act regular seismic activity there forever, mm -hmm. you know, like forever. Um, and yet they went and they bought. And the banks, you know, gave them mortgages. Yeah. And, you know, they invested their their lives, you know, in as people do in Hawaii, in their homes, in a place where Everybody really knew. It wasn't just the geologists. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that this was, you know, n not really, what, sustainable, that yeah. something would happen. Yeah. Including the guys at, at Pune Ge Geothermal Venture. They knew, too. In fact, you know, geothermal is their middle name, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> you know, so the question is, um, how does this affect Hawaii's, you know, per perception of dealing with it, I mean, if, yeah. if I went out and bought a home on, on the on the on the lava now, I'd be I'd be crazy. But if yeah. I went out and bought a home on a beach which already had signs of inundation, which is in the report mm -hmm. as having signs of inundation, would I be any less crazy? Well, you know. Everybody has their dream to have a house on the beach, but you know we're just trying to provide information with this, and it's it's up to them to use it responsibility, you know, <laughs> responsibly. <laughs> um, back to your previous question, we didn't have a lot of information on on which areas were more vulnerable, which beach was more vulnerable than that one. We we do now, so I hope the information will be used wisely, and we'll make some better decisions going forward on how we plan our community development, you know, and, and things like that, and mm -hmm. um, how we'll recover from disasters, you know, in in. You know, the situation that happened in, in Puerto Rico is, is our worst case scenario. We're very um, isolated, vulnerable island state, of course, you know, and, um, you know, so we, we need to be building back smarter, you know, um, next time, the next round. Or rebuilding, Re the yeah. case maybe. I mean, yeah. for example, I don't know if it's a good example, but uh, in Puerto Rico, the storm affected electrical power. Mm -hmm. It toppled, um, you know, power poles all over the place. It somehow, uh, you must know more about this, Maria, it somehow stopped the, the generating plants from generating, okay? Now you have nothing. Well, if you don't have the distribution system, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yeah, do nothing. you any good distribution, to keep your Distribution, plants, nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I sense that there is a parallel here, because some of our power lines are under underground, mm -hmm. They're uh, under the, what do you call it, inundation table, yeah, so to speak? Yeah, yeah um, certainly. Anything within the sea level rise exposure area, you know, back to that, is, is, is vulnerable. That, that's our roads and, and anything underlying those roads, which, could, you know, the, the sewer networks, the um, storm drainage networks, the um, power infrastructure that's under there is, you know, is going to be submerged. And um, a, lot of, a lot of the agencies are starting to wake up to that, you know. Um, uh, you know, water supply issues. The, the oh yeah, more salt water, that, wa yeah. salt water getting into these yeah. pipes and, 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 and sewage them getting up. out of the pipes. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. And the storm drain system is probably one of the most vulnerable areas because that's that, that's that's directly connected to the sea. So, with the high tides that we have um, had the last year and around the king tides and all that, if you talked about that. Um, very often, that's where we saw the water coming back up out of the storm drain system. So that's going to be a real challenge. But. Um, as, as sea levels get higher and higher, we actually will see groundwater start cropping up out of some of the particularly low-lying areas um, and essentially creating new wetlands or areas and, and or areas that don't drain very quickly um, when, there's, when there's rain. So, so it's not just the beaches. It's not just the beaches. It's, it's the back shore areas, too, that are, that are low-lying. Yeah. Highways. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the highways, 
The highways really stand out as a real concern for me. Um, because they're on the peripheral. They're on the peripheral. They're critical links to a lot of these, you know, um, coastal neighborhoods. Um, they're unique links. There's no alternative there's, route. There's no. There's one road around a lot yeah, of our yeah. islands, and um, that that you know they're already suffering damages. Um, you know, to, for example would be like Hanoa Pi'ilani Highway, West Maui, going out from Ma'alaya to Lahaina. If you've driven that, um, very low lying. Even with tiny, small waves and a high tide, it overwashed the section of the highway now. So just a foot of sea level rise and um, you have big problems along that road. Luckily, they're starting to move some of that road back um, with the bypass. Uh, expensive because there's a hillside there. It, it is expensive. Um, here on Oahu, the, the northeast area, Ka'ava, Punalu, those areas already overwashed by waves repeatedly. Yeah. Drive up there, you see sand across the road after every high tide, and, and um, DOTs had to dump more and more rock to protect more and more of the highway, and all the beach that was in front of that road has been lost, and that's just kind of the leading edge of the problems we're going to see. We really have to yeah. wake up to some of these challenges, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's just serious. So um, I am getting scared, and I suppose <laughs> okay. that's not inappropriate. So Maria. Can you make a sort of half halftime summary of where we've been in this discussion and then take us out to a break? Okay, sure. So, um, you know, we started off talking last week about the whole climate change mitigation adaptation um, task force. Now, the first thing, of course, is what, it, what would be the impact of different levels? And so where should the efforts be focused? Is it, you know, I mean, it's a combination of things. Not only are we trying to do the mitigation with reducing the greenhouse gas production, mm -hmm. and I'd like to make a pitch for Hawaii's avoidance of greenhouse gases um, on a ton basis for Hawaii may be small, but we have an ability to influence and to demonstrate success that can have multiplier effects, and so that is one, one aspect of it. And then there's the other piece of what do you harden, what do you move, how do you plan your investments, how do you mitigate some of those impacts. And so what I liked best about the report was actually not the paper part, but the map, so you can go get a visual sure. of what might be involved, and that, you know, gets you scared, but also we're resilient people, you know, and we will figure out how to make this work, but we need the information upon which to build a plan, and so that's why I think this report is very interesting, very important, and go check it out online. Okay. That, that's a summary? Well, before the break. Okay, all right. <laughs> now we're going to have a break. Okay. <laughs> that's Maria and Brad will be right back. You'll see. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunitsue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us, where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii, with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Bingo, we came back. That's Maria Tome, my co-host here for the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum's Hawaii State of Clean Energy show every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. And our special guest um, is, is Brad Romine, and he is a scientist and a consultant um, on coastal management, coastal erosion, coastal conditions. Coastal geology, coastal processes, Everything coastal hazards, coastal. whatever. Yeah, coastal. Better coastal uh, yeah. than postal. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> At the Sea Grant College at UH Manoa. Thank you, Jay. So, um, yeah, so to get into uh, some of the, uh, you know, more graphic issues, if I could mm -hmm. say, um, what areas should we be most worried about in your, you know, view of this report? Yeah, well, um, so the state report um, looked at the vulnerabilities from sea level rise statewide um, up to a level of three feet um, of sea level rise. And uh, 
it, it looked at statewide and looked at island by island. And um, among the islands, Oahu really stands out as the most vulnerable. And um, that's a couple reasons. Um, one is our geography. We have particularly low-lying coastal plains around our island, um, sandy coastal plains for the most part, uh, for large part. And we decided to build right close up on the edge of that coastal plain. Oh, let's yeah. talk about the reef runway. Yeah, the reef runway. Yeah, we Inundated. built out on the reef. You can't land the big ones or the small ones or any of the planes there without. That, that could be a problem area, yeah. You know, when we start to get the higher sea level rise projections, that area looks pretty badly flooded. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a big money, big ticket area, you know, where they folks might want to spend money to adapt that. It was an essential piece of might infrastructure. Might want to spend some money on You that. might want to keep that piece of infrastructure going, I would yeah, think, yeah. you know. Um, you know, I worry also about, um, you know, the less developed areas, our, our, you know, more country, you know, suburban areas on the coastline. Um, what are we going to do for those folks, you know, those the beachfront homes, you know, that are, that are going to be uh, impacted by increasing erosion and wave overwash? You know, you know what happens? The same thing is the Puna effect. So everybody knew that Puna had a certain risk to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now the storm comes, so to speak, um, and they don't have a home. And we're going to put them in the, in the, in the cafetorium. Mm. Where are you going to put them? Uh, you got to build them a home, a little home, a little tiny home maybe, or a big home. Uh, they don't have insurance. So where does this burden actually fall mm -hmm. for all the people who lost their homes, hundreds of people? Where does it fall? It falls on the taxpayer. The government is going to have to, and it's not clear if FEMA or the federal government is going to really, you know, get in there, roll up their sleeves and help out. So those people are our burden. And they add to our existing burden for affordable housing and for homeless, right? Okay, now <laughs> you, you, you take other things in Oahu where these neighborhoods are inundated and where are these people going to go? Yeah, good question. These are questions we're, you know, got to all work out together. I don't have the answers to that. Um, Maybe we'll bring them back to Puna and put them on top of the, no, I'm only kidding. Fortunately, with sea level rise, this is for most of part a, a slow evolving process. I mean, we're, we're facing some problem areas right now, like Sunset Beach, for example, that's having major erosion problems. But, you know, we don't, ha we have years to decades to work this out for a lot of other areas, you know. Um, so there's time to do this. I, I think we don't have to, you know, knee jerk reaction. Well, that's my second stuff. question. Yeah. My second question is how much time is there? How much time? It depends on, you know, location, site by site, um, area by area. But, um, you know, uh, w we need to start planning now. That's, that's the bottom line. Um, you know, we can't ignore this problem any longer. Um, it, the planning needs to start now. We need to develop, you know, funding to maybe move some infrastructure, maybe even private development out of the way in some areas or, or you know, harden other critical infrastructure. It's, it's going to cost money, of course, and that's what it's going to come down to a lot. But we also need to be smart about this. And um, one of the places we're working right now is with the community planning process. So the counties are required to develop these community plans, the vision for how they want a community to look out in the future 20 or so years and, and beyond. So we see that as one critical place to start utilizing this, this data. So they understand and integrate this the sea level rise and coastal hazards map data um, into the process of developing a vision for, for their community you know, in the future. It, you know, for years and years we've talked in Hawaii, especially about energy, about NIMBY, not in my backyard. Mm. Don't build that thing in my backyard. You know? Don't do anything in my backyard. You leave me alone. Okay, okay this is reverse NIMBY. Hmm. This, this means Please fix my backyard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come around, spend some money in my backyard to mm -hmm. save my backyard. And so, when you get into a community plan, everybody has got a silo of, of personal interest. Right. I want my backyard to be saved, not his backyard. Mm -hmm. And so, you have a very interesting kind of community meeting there, community conversation. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same as the old conversation. It's a brand new kind of conversation, and you really wonder what's going to happen yeah. because you could get locked up. And 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 what they're really talking about is spending money. And so now you have the money people, legislature, for example, they have to in, engage politically with the people in the community.
community who want their backyard fixed. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be hard, and I it almost is, think no that you know the form of democracy that we have created here in Hawaii, where everything is transparent and everything is, what's the word? You know, we 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 listen to everyone, we hear everyone, and we have very long conversations where everyone can express himself may not be exactly the right model for fixing this. There may not be enough time to have a conversation where everybody gets his two cents in about his backyard being more important than his neighbor's backyard. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, <laughs> hold any comments on that. That may be for our, our politicians to, to figure that part out. But, I keep uh, thinking the yeah. civil engineers are going to be Busy. Some interesting <laughs> They're going to be opportunities busy. to uh, figure things out. Yeah. But you know, one thing that strikes me from what you said, Brad, is that, is that the charts and graphs that show you which are the most vulnerable areas mm -hmm. uh, don't necessarily tell you which are the areas uh, that are that are that our government should be fixing first, mm -hmm. because there are other considerations, as you indicated earlier. Right. There are economic considerations. There are social considerations. There are political considerations mm -hmm. uh, as to which of those areas is really at the top of the priority list. So the state state interagency climate commission is is working on that and. Um, with Sea Grant's help, with um, UH's help at large, and um, all these recommendations, the data from Sea Level Rise report, um, and trying to prioritize those recommendations, take some next steps with that. Um, but of course, as you mentioned, Maria, that's only one side of the coin. The other, the other side is the climate greenhouse gas mitigation side too, and the Climate Commission is charged with trying to address that too. So they're they're working really hard to try to do that. They meet quarterly. These are public meetings. Um, there's a similar effort going on in the city. They have their um, Office of Climate Change, Sustainability, and Resilience, and their own climate commission at the city and county of Honolulu that's got on a kind of a parallel track, and we're trying to make sure these two commissions are, are communicating, talking, communicating, yeah. you know. Yeah. So this, this commission, though, is interested in the coastline. This commission is, is statewide, and um, they've done the, we've done the sea level rise report with them, um, which of course looks mostly at the coastline. But um, they have a much broader charge than that. And again, looking at climate change um, mitigation, greenhouse gas it, mitigation, it's really and, and other, and then ultimately other climate impacts beyond sea level rise. To distinguish between um, taking steps to stop um, emissions of carbon mm -hmm. and to um, you know, stop um, sea level rise, I, I guess stop climate change, stop globally, stop climate change. Yeah. That's one category, one basket of things you can do. Right. The other basket is how do you, what's the word you use, you both used harden. How do you harden our community so we're, we're better prepared yeah. for an extreme yeah. storm, we're better prepared for the, you know, the creeping um, inundation that we, we are going to face. I, I prefer so the question the, is, yeah, go ahead Jay, sorry. So I have, for you, I have a billion dollars. Ah. I have a billion dollars for you. Mm. Do I spend it on this basket or that basket? Um, I think you got to kind of split it evenly. And um, I prefer the term adaptation rather than harden, because there's some places we want to kind of work with nature and, and you know, kind of a, a softer approach, maybe pull back a little bit rather than throwing rocks and walls down everywhere because the environmental impacts of that. But um, yeah, I, I think you know we need to invest in um, a renewable energy infrastructure. You know, and the state is doing a lot in, in that direction right now. Um, but the adaptation side, and we, sea level rise is is coming even uh, in the best case scenarios. Um, NASA had a, a, a statement they made back in 2015, just given the greenhouse gases that we're already putting in the atmosphere and the heat content into the, the atmosphere and the oceans from that, we're already committed ourselves to at least three feet of sea level rise. So when that happens depends on how quickly, if and how quickly we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. But we are going to see some, some substantial sea level rise, Hawaii and globally. So we do have to begin adapting, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of, huge of what we're irony, doing. There's a though, as I recall, and you can correct me on this, is we pulled out of COP. Mm. As I recall, Congress and the White House deny climate change. They deny pretty much, you know, the fundamental point of the of the report here. Uh, and as a matter of fact, correct me if I'm mistaken on this, the federal government isn't doing much in terms of spending the money to deal with the root cause, the carbon cause of climate change. Isn't there an irony between spending half of my billion on that when the federal government's not spending anything on it? 
Yeah, it's absolutely frustrating. Um, uh, but you know, the states are taking the charge, and part of this this climate act that directed the state to do the sea rise, rise report also committed the state to the Paris Climate Agreement. So. Real proud of Hawaii for doing that. Other states um, and, and major cities around the U.S. are doing that and leading the charge on, on climate change and greenhouse gas mitigation. So um, let's go ahead and do it without the federal government. And that, that may change, you know. Administrations change, of course. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maria, time for you to try to summarize that one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> are we running out of time already? Okay. <laughs> well, I think. Um, as we move forward in our discussions, you know, the next couple of uh, weeks, we are going to invite the um, city and county to have some their energy guy come and talk about what the city and county's climate change and sustainability group is, is up to. And we also have Hawaii Green Growth coming to talk about their scorecard. And, you know, all, the nice thing is that there is a lot of communication between these, these groups. And I do think that there is a lot happening at the local and state level, and that's really where the action is. I mean, we're the ones who have to fix our, our, our highways and make sure that we have the infrastructure that we need and we plan and we have many years to do it. Um, so there is hope. It's scary. Check the map, get scared, and then check the recommendations and say, ah, but we're going to work on this together, both the mitigation and the adaptation. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it reminds me of the last uh, legislative briefing we did in January this year where Sharon Moriwaki, uh, who's running for office now for the state senate, um, was determined with, with a lot of your colleagues uh, to make the point that energy uh, and climate change are inextricably intertwined and you, and you have to look at sustainability uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, guess, I guess that's a big point going forward. Uh, that we we must be leader. I think you alluded to this before. We must be leaders. Hawaii must be a leader. Yeah. We we want people to see what we do and, and maybe hopefully follow what we do, um, so that regardless of what happens in the White House, we we can actually take steps. That's really important. The problem is um, making making sure the legislature understands this. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think they're getting it. I've been uh, they've been very uh, willing participants in the uh, state climate commission. So yeah, thank you to our state legislators that passed the climate initiative and for their continuing involvement in this in this effort. Yeah. One other thing I want to mention before we close is this, um, is that it, it, um, the Marshall Islands, mm. they're already going inundate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're already losing their beaches. To, I mean, in a few years, there won't be any Marshall Islands. Yeah. And other such islands in the South Pacific, and yeah. and it's sort of like the Puna kind of experience because it's an unfunded mandate for Hawaii mm. uh, that they will come here, mm. we will have them, and we will have to find housing for them, mm -hmm. and there will be far more of them when their islands uh, submerge than there are now. So we'll we'll take the hit on that probably on a on a state basis, don't you think? Mm. And more than we are taking the hit on it now, we will have to write big checks going forward to. Save ourselves. You know. But you got how many billions? Did did you say you said you had a billion? So thanks. That's a good start. What's that? You said you had a billion dollars. So that's a good start. <laughs> well, I'm, thanks, Jay. Yeah, let me let me just get my, my checkbook <laughs> out. <laughs> One more thing is: Are they talking about this at Verge? You were there. Uh, is this part of the conversation that, that is happening around energy right now? Uh, maybe Maria can speak to that a little better. Yes, I, definitely. I, yeah. I, mean, he was I only went to one first. session. Yeah, I presented <laughs> yeah. on this information at a no. session, so I was real pleased to be invited to chance. And earlier to do that. in the day, yeah. there was a presentation on not only this. This is throughout the topic of sustainability, climate change, mm -hmm. mitigation, adaptation is throughout, and this specific report is actually brought up specifically several times. So definitely, definitely part of urge. Yeah. Well, I was, I was, uh, I was. At first, I was concerned that it's not that easy to make the connection between climate change and energy, but it, it seems it gets easier over time. Yeah. It does. I think, especially if you think about it all under that umbrella of sustainability, that's really what it all comes down to. And know? what does that really mean? What sustainability? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just what does that really mean? It means not overusing our resources. You know, surviving. Surviving. Yeah. 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 As a community. Right. And right. Individuals too. You know? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Uh -huh. Well, thank you very much, Brad. Thanks for the invite, Jay. Great to have Maria, you down thank here. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Maria, flowers from across the table. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>